person gets a hold of a person that has that kind of fo followers mentality or is a little bit not as strong willed here, they can really take you down the path. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening with Diego right now. Living a life without borders. Whenever he is, he is home. As a traveler, even the locals ask him advice on how to live. Even his feminine side is manly, loved more than feared. When he shakes your hand, you get tingles. He's a teacher of teachers, feared by many, respected by even more. He makes lifelong connections with just a glance. Have ever seen a man walk in to the octagon with one corner man? Why one? I only need one. Who is it? His name is Josh Fabio. But you have you have Holly and John here as well, so there's an abundance of coaches. You didn't know? Two, three weeks ago, I done with Jackson Wink. I did not know that. Yeah. Why? Because for ten years, eight years, I was training myself. Actually, Joshua Fabia. Fabio. And uh, <clears throat> I'm his coach, trainer, manager. You know, I'm the, I'm the physical therapist. I'm the nutritionist. I'm doing all those jobs of which you see a whole lot of people have full occupational titles for. Even if you could do all those jobs, it, does it seem like the best idea to have one person do all of them? It seems like that's, that's a lot of work, man. But that's the point of if you study and know what I actually do and go to the website, schoolofselfawarenessworldwide.com. My name is Joshua E. Fabio. I'm the founder of School of Self, a transformation uh, type of study where different methods, practicing the physical body or the survival. Where be ready, be strong, and um, so, so tell them what School of Self Awareness will teach you with this online course. Go ahead, tell them since you're the guide in the course, Diego. Let's just say like this me. man's name is Joshua Fabia. Yeah, he has good. taken Diego under his wing. He's from the School of Self Awareness, and ever since. I mean, but have you ever met anybody that's less self aware? I mean, now it doesn't look like I have anything, but I'm kind of pulling on his throat. And now, because he can still resist this, he's still able to move, I'm going to shorten the movement by grabbing his balls. So now it's done. You understand? It's done. Because I have his balls in his throat. Okay. Pretty simple. Balls in throat. That's going to be the key on the ground. The universe brought me Josh Fabia right at the right time. I'm on this air dime. I got a hood on. Taking out a little bit of my own inner anger, and the gym's closed, and I'm in this bathroom, and this this little guy, very small, starts walking up. I don't know what it was about my intuition, but he was walking up very smooth. I I man, I've never seen a human being walk that smooth. Point my finger and. I go, what do you do? And before you know it, I felt like I was in a counseling session. Because I work with Josh 10 days in secret, in secret, the la 10 days before my last fight with Mickey Gow. We work 10 days in secret every night at my house. We work, we stay up till two in the morning, working on movement, working on, on, on vision, working on mind. He's a mind coach. He's, he, he's, a breathe, he's a breathing coach. He's a strength and conditioning coach. He's a real true custom auto, man. He breaks it all down. A real true custom auto, man. I was on the first kindergarten rugby league in Christchurch, New Zealand. I've participated in martial arts my whole life through actual family tradition of understanding things. Like, quite a bit different than going to a place and giving them money. I never had to pay for training, and I've never been trained in that way. Do you see now what I mean? Just asking plainly what are your qualifications to corner someone for a high-level MMA fight, what would you say? 
I didn't know there was a necessary qualification. <laughs> It's just, Have you ever in your life met somebody that's less self-aware? The same kid that's growing constantly through the rest of high school, right? They go to take that basketball shot. Now, one day they've calibrated it, boom. The next day, you know, next month they grow. The calibration's off. And now we're dealing with a lot of weird issues of self-esteem, fear, anxiety, self-doubt. Now we might understand how I understand a little bit more about it since I've been able to be in my body a little longer than most people. Does that make sense? How about putting out these videos thinking that it makes them look good in the it fighter meetings? Worse. It makes them look a thousand times worse. Keep it fair. You want some video? Contact me and I'll send it to you. You want to know what's going on? You want to actually talk to the people doing it? You might actually have to fucking talk to me. And coming at him like he's going to know all this shit, he ain't. He hasn't been there the whole time. So if anybody needs to actually get those answers, you will have to speak to me. And to do that, probably allowing the media to turn the narrative on the guy that's trying to help people here. And when you respect these two legends, it seems a little disrespectful that you don't recognize that they respect me. And if you're gonna be the one telling the narrative, that's on you when I'm getting shit on by the public, by millions of people. Uh, if you're gonna be here like leveraging off of all of this man notice i'm on the end of the shitty stick here and none of you have stood up for anybody that needed to be stood up for and that's real you guys are like the tough guys and all this stuff if nobody's man, gonna know what the fuck you're talking about you don't know you don't no. know, you know what i'm referring to no i don't know what you're referring oh, to okay. and talking. i haven't called one of diego's fights no, where no, you've been in his corner not so. talking about i'm talking in general What's that? That also has nothing to do with you or your school or your teaching. No, no, no. What they're seeing in the ab game. Abs absolutely. Abs so absolutely. What that's I'm just what it seems like you're doing. You're, you're making it about yourself. And it's about Diego. I'm sorry. It seems have, like that. It was about the commentating. Uh, understand what I'm referring to and why I'm speaking adamant like this? Please, go to Google. Go to YouTube. And just, no, real quick. Put in my name and then see what's going on with the slander. I've seen it. Okay, so you've seen They're it. They're all well aware of it. Oh, so, so if you're well aware, why are we acting like this didn't happen? Why because are you talking? This, this is, is not, not about you. Boss. This is Diego, Diego's no, no, no. fighter meeting. There's no reason but it has to, to do out. with him. That's my There's point. Something. Because you're disrespecting us and we have other athletes that are waiting right now to be in this room to have the opportunity that Diego just had. And you're lecturing us on something that- Nobody's lecturing. I'm trying done. to ask for a fair plight. If, if that's too much to ask for, clearly, it's fine. I was just asking. When you're a top fighter, DC, you have a coach. The best coaches are the ones like Trevor Whitman who want nothing yep. to do with the limelight, who want to be off to the side. Bob Cook, like Bob yes. Cook. Like you don't you never hear Bob this Cook. guy. You never hear, I don't even know Bob's voice, what it sounds like. Yeah. This guy wants to come in and start berating people and tell me, like, get out of here with that nonsense. It's it is crazy, very bro. sad to see. It is very, it breaks well, my heart to like, see this. You might actually have to fucking talk to me. You will have to speak to me. Put in my name. This is not, not about you. What are you doing? Like, what are you? We're here to talk to Diego, but that's the problem. That's the problem. The guy starts to become so important. He wants to be such a massive part of what's going on that he just, he imparts himself in, in ways that he should not be involved. Hey, you know, I'm Diego. Okay. I'm Bob Ben. I'm the executive director. Wait, Jan. Do me a favor. We look, I just want to speak to him for a quick second privately with his manager. Hey, you speak to him? Matt are sitting eating breakfast, having a good time, and Diego Sanchez's coach, Joshua, comes up and starts talking to Matt. I'm just saying, when we see things, it'd be nice to acknowledge the, the comparison. It'd be nice to acknowledge that what just happened to that man could have definitely happened to Diego, and it clearly didn't.
as he's talking to Matt. He's like, he's like going in on something about how he's not getting his respect from the media. And like Matt was a part of all this. I don't know you, but as of now, I'm not a huge fan. No, I understand, man. I understand. So listen, do me a favor. This is what really cool for us right now. I understand. I respect you, I don't know you too well. Right. I don't know the point you're trying to say you're coming out to me yet. I wouldn't, I don't, from what I see with your training, I, I don't, I think it's silly, but that, I don't give a shit. Okay. All right. You're not my guy. You're not right. working my guy. That's my point. My point is that when I'm being brought up and you don't even want to say my name. I don't even, how about this? How about this? Honestly, I don't even know your fucking name. That's my how point. How about that? Oh, 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 oh. saying that you called them for a quote formal request for all of diego's pre-fight medical records paper copy unnecessary post-fight records every physician that he has ever been evaluated by by the way we have no control over any of that that's all commissioned on so you'd have to make those requests formally with the commission but more importantly with the direct quote that i received was uh, you stated that the, quote, long-term effects of Diego being an MMA fighter were your basis for requesting it. Yeah. So I, I went through this with Mark Hunt, and here's the reality. If you're concerned or he's concerned that he's having negative effects, then we're not going to fight him, and I'm going to pull the fight right now, and we're going to call it a day, and we'll release him, and he can go do something else with his life because I'm not putting anybody in that cage that doesn't feel 100% or thinks they're suffering from any medical issues. Hunter Campbell handled that about as good as anyone I've ever seen in my life handle a situation like this because you can tell what they're you can tell what the guy's doing. You can tell what he's doing. It's all- well, it has more to do with how is his physical body and all the treatments that he's had over 17 years of injuries in his hands, his face and all over his body that I'm referring to that if he needs medical attention after his career how is he supposed to move on without medical records as that's what I'm concerned about. That's all it is, is that if he has to go see another doctor about his hip or his back or any of these things, how, how is that doctor, why would we have to pay for new imaging, new everything when it should be on file? Well, I don't understand what the problem is. All I'm saying is I was trying to understand that. Now I had the medical on the phone and I said, hey, while you're here, can we now ask for these uh, things so that Diego knows all his injuries from over his career and that's it. That's all it is. They were trying to build a a lawsuit or something against the UFC with the with the with the line of questioning that they were going down. But this guy, and you could tell when it's this guy and not Diego Ariel. The whole thing is him. After, bro, after the Diego's fight, like off to the side. Here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'll send an email to you guys. I'm going to express my concerns. Okay. I need a confirmation in writing that he's physically able to compete. He's not suffered any effects of being an MMA fighter. He doesn't feel like he has any brain issues or cognitive issues. I got to go through the whole battery that I go through with everybody that sort of makes a claim that you, at least they're telling me that you made in this situation. And if he's not comfortable doing that, then we pull the fight and we move on. It's very simple. Yeah, I we're don't. already, I already called Taylor today yeah. and we're already having her schedule all of the medicals to be done starting on the 12th when we return to albuquerque sir so we're like trying to comply i'm in the middle of travel i'm trying to have help from your side since the requirements are coming now to be done in three weeks and we still have two other pieces of travel in our camp and this is all i'm saying is uh, we could have complied to this very easily 10 weeks ago that's all I'm saying, sir. And no, I, okay, but we're talking different issues now. Okay, well, no, whatever not. issues you got, we'll do whatever you need, man. There is no issues on our side. I asked for the same medical things. If he had a bloody nose, why wouldn't we want the records of all these things? I mean, he's about ready to leave the UFC, and and how would we be able to ask for all this stuff later? 
very many people in the UFC, and I thought, hey, I might as well say this at this moment. Now, all of a sudden, it's a it's an interesting deal. Like, cool, man. We'll jump through whatever hoops you need. Diego is 100% fine, as he is here with me right now. Um, he's fine, man. Everything's good. So I mean, you understand my position, right? I can't ever be in a situation where 10 years from now, I got a guy that's drooling on himself in a hospital and i got another guy saying yeah we told the ufc before his last fight that he was having some, all these issues and they put him in there anyway gotcha i understand yeah. that totally hey let me um yeah I'll, I'll leave it at that that's cool yeah send me whatever i need to do and we'll get it done as soon as possible all right thanks josh yes Have sir all right bye <laughs> hey diego win and show as he was on his way out the door. Because imagine, dude don't get that last payday. Because there's no guarantee he was going to beat Cowboy Cerrone. But instead, you pay him his money. You wish him luck. Only because they care about Diego. Dana has a soft spot for Diego. But this Josh Fabia, man, he's a bad guy. And you I just don't see know. his intentions. You see his vibe. His, like the They're so that clear. He's out there is, his, his intentions is are clear. That he's not trying to do what's in the best interest of no. his athlete. I don't know anybody that doesn't like Diego Sanchez. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to watch Diego Sanchez fight. I'm not sure that those people exist, to be very honest with you. That's how loved you are in our community. But I do see a lot of disagreement and, and negative stuff towards Joshua. I guess in the way I see it, I think that it's okay to have those two things separate. Um, and, and I think that that's where the problem comes for you because I, 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 see the, I see the pain. I can hear it in your voice that this isn't how you wanted it to end. Like we genuinely want what's good for Diego Sanchez. Um, and I, th I think that's where it's coming from. I think he takes it as hate and people are attacking him, but it's, it's not, it's concern. It's concern and love. And um, it, it, Joshua was absolutely being attacked. And I think that almost every reason he is being attacked is valid. Um, and I, I just don't think Diego, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think Diego can see those two things separately. And, and, mm. If, if he doesn't take it, if he watches this, as I'm sure he will, if, if he doesn't take anything away from this entire conversation we had or, or anything else that's going on right now, I just want Diego to know that it's completely from a place of care uh, yeah. and admiration for him, his career and, and, and the life that he's lived, at least in front of us for the last 17 years. This is just an absolute mess, and I'm so happy Diego Sanchez separated himself from this guy. Well, man, I'm getting ex-girlfriend vibes from Joshua Fabia. People are speculating that Diego Sanchez may have CTE. He may not be the same guy he was before, and Joshua Fabia is taking advantage of him. Let's talk about the OnlyFans, man. Like, what is that? We have sexually descriptive titles and stuff for the videos on there, and Joshua Fabia's explanation for that is, you gotta know how the market is for OnlyFans. That's why I gotta make these kind of titles for the videos, but that's not how only fans work working for a guy that falsely represented himself as a regular person and he starts talking about he was in special education holy shit huge red flags man and diego has been an addict that i had to live there because he was broke and lost all his money and strung out on kratom and alcohol and 30 other substances that he has sexual abuse issues and i've been holding up all this i've been doing everything and everybody's coming at me diego has clearly perception. been taking advantage of me for two years diego is probably special needs he needed to be properly cognitively studied diego took steroids in high school the, he was almost making it look like diego sanchez was the manipulator in this whole relationship or not necessarily manipulator but the guy that was deceiving right didn't tell joshua fabi about all of his troubles and and history back in high school he took steroids like he was the victim because Diego Sanchez did not tell him about his whole life in advance that's what Joshua Fabia's argument is here he's the victim because Diego Sanchez didn't tell him that he took special education classes Diego has substance abuse issues and all that stuff and yes I'm not making this up he literally said that Diego taking special education classes when he was small is a red flag to him Fabia is wrong about why the fans were criticizing him they were not criticizing him for speculations behind the scenes. He says that people believe that he is to be blamed for all the craziness or that he's associated with it. And that's all lied on speculation. That is not what it is. We are looking at literal video of him doing weird stuff with the guys he's training. He has Diego Sanchez hanging upside down and he's kicking him in the head and punching him and stuff.
what is kicking somebody in the head while they're hanging upside down going to do? It honestly reminds me of McDojo Masters. Guys who practice chi attacks and death touches and stuff, which is actually something that Joshua Fabia has said in the past. Death touch, a, a move that cannot be used because it's too dangerous. The forbidden movements and stuff, like stuff straight out of a movie. You haven't watched it and analyzed it in slow motion at this point. Honestly, you're part of not being able to see the mastery level of that defense. Joshua had come out earlier today and he's upset and he's angry and he's starting to, to air the dirty laundry, if you will, but he hasn't done it yet. He's even said, I have footage, I have proof, I have tape and I'm going to release it. No, stop, don't do that. The threat was good, but we gotta stop. There, there is a, a man code and I do not mean male. I mean, it's human, human code. And there's certain things that are privileged, period. And I know when you're talking to your priest or your rabbi or your lawyer that those are built in protections by law. Excuse me. If Joshua was to break this code and he was to bring out video and or evidence that could harm and or embarrass Diego as a way of defending himself, which everybody has the right to do, as a way of saying, I'm not the evil guy and I can prove it, which everybody would like to have. But if you do that, at the expense of revealing privileged information. I don't mean this from a legal standpoint, classified information. I don't mean that from a legal standpoint. I mean this within human code. If you had access and or information to something because you were privileged and this person trusted you and you are gonna use that to make them vulnerable, you're not gonna make yourself look good. Nobody's going to look at it and go, oh my goodness, here's the facts and here's the evidence. They're going to look at it and go, I cannot believe that you just revealed that. That was private. That was after hours. That was behind closed doors. That was between two friends. That was between student and athlete. And there are a few bonds stronger than that. I mean, you'd have to go to father, son, brother, sister, man, wife, coach, athlete. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a strong bond. And if anything ever happens between a coach and his athlete, that needs to be so quiet. That needs to be so quiet. And I know several people that have had to go through that type of a divorce. And I've judged every one of them. And I didn't base any of my judgment or look down my nose on anybody over the merits. I judged them how I went through life and how I viewed them on whether they protected and concealed classified information or they didn't head movement head movement head movement head movement she'll fade up this head movement head movement head